uh, good to see you all. So um, what I'll do this morning, uh, this evening, with because we've got quite a few beginners, um, I'll go over all the basic meditation techniques um, that we do, see in the fraternity, and I, I won't get like overly uh, complicated, but I'll tr try to sort of explain things in reasonable um, detail. So I'll start off with the, uh, say the, say the, the breathing meditation. So when we look at, when we look at the whole, say, synopsis of meditation practice, uh, in a nutshell, that um, essentially you're looking at a, like a, a retraining of uh, attention. So as we develop uh, meditation, regardless of the kind of technique, what you're actually doing yourself within your mind experience is you're placing your uh, attention on the, on the meditation object of your choice and uh, to help sort of center the mind, calm the mind, still the mind, and... Um, you have, say, two sides of the meditation. You have, you, you have the, say, the, the peaceful, tranquilizing side, and you have, say, the investigation, vipassana-based, uh, say, insight-based um, meditation. And the two of them, in order to be um, successful in meditation over time, over the years, you have to have both sides of the practice, say, working together um, evenly uh, over time. So, uh, essentially, you know, meditation... Uh, in itself goes right through your personality. So as the weeks and the months go by, you know, going from the surface level, you know, to deeper uh, into the personality, and it can affect many uh, sort of areas of your life. And you know, you, even over time, you could probably see a dozen um, different um, advantages to uh, meditation uh, practice. You know, as as, uh, as you develop um, as you develop the path, you know, in, in, in time. So. In essence, so for example, when we look at the, the two key pr uh, principal meditation practices that the, the monks tend to do, but you, you can have like a, 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 a variety of practices you can do um, which suits your character, but uh, the vast the majority of the, uh, the monks and nuns and the practitioners uh, spend time on the, say, the, uh, the, the sitting meditation with Anapanasati or the, the walking meditation. So with the, with the breathing meditation, you can locate your attention basically almost anywhere in the, in the physical body. You can watch, say, the, the whole body. You can focus on the, f on, the, say, on the full chest between the throat and the abdomen. You can focus on the, on the belly, middle of the chest, the throat, around the mouth, which is what I do quite commonly, or even at the nose tip, which might be like too fine for some people. And um, so each, when you start off at the beginning stages, you, f you find the area of the body which is actually physically comfortable for you and you know it's comfortable if you can sustain your focus say for at least I mean not, not, say nothing less than say 30 minutes you know like reasonably comfortably and um, each person will find that when you when you place your attention in one place um, you're opposing say the natural currents of the mind so the, the, the normal, say, thoughts and feelings and, and um, attachments, that, you know, the things that you're interested in in life will tend to draw your uh, attention away from, say, the, the breathing meditation uh, or walking or even, you know, it could even things like simple mantras or whatnot. And so w what you actually do, so, you know, you, you may have the, the initial ability to, you know, focus for, you know, whatever it is, could be five or ten seconds, then, like, your attention gets, um, gets drawn away and um, so, in essence, it's, it's all, the, all the attachments we have as human beings which um, draws us away from the meditation practice. And how do we, how do we actually work with this? Um, you, know, you know, because in essence, if you didn't have uh, these personal, um, say, interests, um, the, the, the personality characteristics, and you know, all the things that you, you like and dislike, um, in your experience as a human being, if you didn't have all these personality characteristics, um, essentially you, you would be able to go into deep meditation very, very quickly, probably uh, easily, you know, under... So to give you an example, say Achan Chah from, the, from our forest uh, meditation tradition from, you know, from northeast Thailand, who was um, one of the, the senior disciples of Achan Man. So you had Achan Man, who was the... Uh, Achan Sao, who were the two, the two first... Uh, say fully enlightened forest teachers, and then you had um, Achan Cha, 
who was very, very successful, very, very proactive, did a lot of teaching, a lot of um, uh, say, uh, monastic and community support over the years. And I think he's got a, probably at least 300 branch monasteries um, like in, in his lineage. But you know, naturally, he passed away uh, a number of years ago. I think it was the late, late 70s he passed away. And um, so uh, in essence, that when, as you begin to meditate, so for, for example, on, on his level, um, you know, especially if you're at the master's level, you've mastered meditation. Um, you you could easily go into very very deep, you know, very very deep states within say seconds. But for the vast majority of us, we, we may only be able to hold our attention for five to ten seconds before um, we get captivated by something. The mind gets led away. Um, you know, you know all all the different all the different nuances which make us up. You know, which make up our personality. Um, draws our attention away, and, and, and so you know what is the what is the basis of this? So we you know we understand intellectually where you know we would like to be peaceful, we would like to be calm, we would like to be say like to, to be free from stress and problems and difficulties in life. But you know why you know why does this actually take place? You know I have I have the intention to maintain my focus in one location, and then my attention gets drawn away, and um, so. This is where, say, the wisdom, the insight side of the practice comes into play because you can have all the, say, the mental energy um, in the world. You can, have, you can have a very, very sharp, bright intellect, uh, but you may have uh, difficulty in ma ma maintaining attention on a, just a very, very simple object, say, like the breath meditation and, uh, and walking. So you know, even though you know, we understand that we, we want to keep our attention in one place, uh, we continually get sort of led away, and and so this is where the insight side of the practice comes into place, where you you know you really need to understand um, your you know your character, your personality, what actually makes you up, you know your preferences, your likes, dislikes, your, your views and opinions, everything which comprises the personality complex, and we you know, we call it the personality complex because it you know it's complicated. We have a lot of feelings and we have a lot of um, thoughts and ideas. And essentially, we can't let them go tempor temporarily while we're actually trying to do the um, the practice. Because you know, many of you are very, very busy people. You're working full time, and you may have you know families, um, relationships, children, and you know you've got your personal hobbies and interests. You, you know, you're not like the monks and nuns who have more free time and less, say, duties and responsibilities. Say, like over, say, over a 24-hour. Uh, cycle, you know, the vast majority of you have uh, lead very busy lives, and uh, but you know, naturally the monastics can get busy as well. But uh, usually, you know, we definitely have more free time than than the majority of you, of you guys here. So, so how do we work with this? The mind is, you know, the mind is 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 busy. You know, you can't stop thinking. You know, we're attached to different things. So, how do we work with this? So, um, if I put myself in your shoes, what what you do to reduce the complexity? is to take one emotion at a time because your feelings are the energy force, they are the driving force for your intellect, for, your, you know, for the thinking process. Uh, because without um, emotion, without strong emotion, um, essentially you, you would be mentally very, very cool and you could just drop into very, very deep states of meditation in a very short period of time. And, but this is where the, bi the business of, of, say, attachment comes into place. It's, a, it's attachment which leads you away um, on the level of the world. It can lead you away internally with your own sort of with your, your own person with your own personal stuff that we have, or it could lead us out into the world um, into you know it could be work, could be friends, uh, business, travel, you know whatever you can possibly um, think of. You know where the mind goes out um, externally. So you know, so how do how do we how do we work with this particular um, experience? So um, the easiest way is you take one feeling at a time. So say for example, if I had something like um, uh, it could be something like I was somebody somebody mentioned something to me, and then I and then I, you start to compare, certain, say one person say uh, with with another, say in a community setting, and um, so you you get this kind of thought process and. You, you really need to examine that experience in its totality. So you know, you think to yourself, well, you know, you think, you know, like the time and the location and the and the people who are concerned, and 
the primary feelings which are driving this experience and then the associated feelings which, sort of, which propagate and keep this kind of um, uh, mental state uh, running. And so when you, when you, in essence, if you explore just one experience at a time, because you know, because of the complexity of, one, of one's mind, one's makeup, one feeling at a time, and try to understand like everything about it, you know, the, 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 the full business. And the reason you do this is because um, if any, any, anything you're actually going through in life, if you're able to understand and comprehend it to quite I mean, a significant level, quite a deep level, that um, you know, you'll, be, you'll be able to actually to let it go and to relinquish it without, um, without let's say, like a, a, a major struggle. Because the reason, the reason why we, we attach, why we take hold of things and we grasp and, we, and um, we can't release things is because we don't really know where we're stuck. So you know, if a person can't let go from it, could be it could be anything. Say, for example, a couple going through divorce, um, either on either on either side. You say one of the one of the couple just can't basically let um, the, the 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 overall experience go and sort of you know move on, um, you know, with their life. You know, and, and as you <coughs> as you know, it's not a small thing. It can haunt people for easily one, two, three years. Um, but if that, in, if that individual was able to comprehend the totality of that experience, as, as you watch, you know, especially with the meditators, as you watch your mind and you watch the way you react and the way you think and the way you feel, um, and you, you, know, you, you, you really get to know yourself for, for better or worse because you know, all of us have very good personal characteristics and some of us have um, uh, sides of us and it could be unpleasant stuff, dark sides of the, the personality, but essentially all of us are like that. We're all made up of, of both wholesome and unwholesome, um, say, you know, personality characteristics. You know, that's the nature of a human being. We're not born, you know, like uh, saints. You know, we're not, we're not, you know, like Mother Teresa or, you know, or Mahatma Gandhi or, you know, any, anyone you can think of who's got, um, uh, who's got credibility on the level of the world as being, say, like a genuinely uh, good person, you know, within a, a religious, spiritual, say even like, you know, say, a cultural uh, perspective, you know, and, and the Dalai Lama, you know, they're, they're, these people consistently have good moral behavior, they have a basis in, say, say wisdom uh, and intelligence, you know, the ability, you know, and when they, when they give like say views and opinions on anything, it it, it makes it makes sense. It it, it, it has um, it has a like a sound basis to it. So, with all of us, um, as you as you go through your your personal experience on any level, um, so you know whenever wherever we're actually stuck um, in life, that you know you you need to explore. You need to be your own like psychologist, and not to leave any stone unturned because. If, if there's anything whatsoever inside you that you can't release, you know, so for example, um, you, know, you, you could even get monks, you know, could get, they could get stuck on some issue, you could even go back into childhood, could even be with mum and dad, and because, we, especially with children, because they're very, very sensitive, it can go very, very deep, and it can stay with you for a significant um, period of time. So, the, with, e with, any, with every, um, with every uh, individual concern, that really explore it, and, and you know every uh, every possible angle, every the way it affects you, the way the way it feels in your body, the way it feels in your mind, um, all the associated feelings, you know the time and place, the people concerned, absolutely everything about it. So you know you're, you're being like your own psychologist, but you examine it very, very gently, and you know you don't have to be. Like sort of like you know like really like say really brutal or really confronting because you know each 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 individual um, has to uh, pace themselves you know in relation with the their their own personal uh, makeup because you know you may you may be doing this for like five ten twenty years plus and um, so you know you just go very very gently you know once one step at a time and.
as you uh, as you explore, you know you're on the right track. You know you're making progress if you see the mind relax and let go over time. So the test of the, say, the strength of your, your insight, your understanding into your own nature, your own feelings, your own personality, um, in, in, in any of the stuff which, is, which, which could be a little bit difficult for you in life, the test will be is that as you, as you, as you investigate and understand what you're going through, you'll see, that you'll see the mind relax, you'll see the mind release its grip, and then you get like a, at least a small sense of ease, a small sense of peace, um, relaxation, and then you know you can, as you as you watch yourself as you go through this, you know you you see that you actually you, you're actually getting somewhere that the mind is is um, is, is like calming down and, and um, releasing. So that will be that will be the two main sides of the the, the practice in a, in a nutshell. But you you will find that the wisdom practice always has at least twice, two to two and a half times more tranquility power, more, more peacefulness power over time than just maintaining your focus on a meditation um, object of your choice. So some people can get peaceful without great difficulty, but everybody um, you know, just, just can't do this like seven days a week. You, everyone, everyone gets uh, blocked or stuck at some point, and then you've got to apply your insight, your wisdom, to to understand exactly what you're going through and then and then free oneself over over time. So uh, they 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 are the two main sides of the practice. So when we look at um, the say the, the, the breathing meditation, um, as as you know that you know you, you find the right location for you. So whether it's a, a sharp focus, whether it's very very broad, you know, so like the the, the, the full body or the full chest or whether you go very sharp, you know, maybe the throat or around the mouth, whatever, whatever actually feels physically and emotionally comfortable for you. The sharper you go with the focus, the more peaceful you, you will get in a shorter um, period of time. But, um, you know, if you go very, very broad, it's more comfortable, but it may take you twice as long to get the same level of, um, uh, say, peacefulness. And so as you as you do the as you do the breathing meditation, um, you know, just breathing in and out. You know, the, with, especially with the beginner's instructions, you you keep one's back one's back straight. You know, the head upright and comfortable. Make sure there's nothing tight around the wrist, the throat, around the uh, the waist, so you can just breathe freely uh, and comfortably. It's always good to breathe into the full ab uh, full abdomen to keep oneself, um, say, mentally um, alert. And um, because you know, naturally, you know, because with the, the early morning start, and because you, many of you guys have come home from work, um, you're probably not bouncing with energy at this point, unless you've had a, you know, maybe some very, very strong tea, like myself. And, uh, and don't, you know, don't be afraid to drink strong tea while you're on retreat here, but like minimize the coffee because coffee. Is, um, is well known for actually stimulating the mind and, and, and making the mind um, think too much. But tea's got a much, the way it affects the brain and nervous system, even strong tea won't make, you, make your mind so busy that it actually becomes a, um, say like an obstacle for you. So, so uh, you know, with the beginner's um, instructions, like, so as, you, as, you, as you're breathing, breathing in and out, I'm, I'm just going to sort of um, go, as, go over some basic principles. You find the right location in the body. In the beginning stage, you can just stay with the breath. But if you find that you're, you're a, a person who's quite intellectual and you still start, you can't stop thinking. Myself, if I, if I can't, if I don't see any peace at all in the first five minutes, I go straight to investigation. So I ask myself, you know, what, you know, what am I thinking about? For what reason? You know, for what, you know, uh, uh, what person? You know, this and that. Just that full comprehension of of your personal experience, and then you, you'll see the mind. The mind will respond quite quickly. I, I always um, I always put emphasis on on insight practice because samadhi has a workable limit. You know, you, you you'll get peaceful up to a point, and then something's going to to block you. And most people, uh, without diverting too much, most people need an absolute minimum, like two hours, 
to see like a really good state of meditation, you know, and, and most people like after about three hours the, 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 the mental energy starts to starts to, to drop off. Uh, Bhante Gunaratana from the US, he's a very well seasoned retreat teacher. I think he was a, he's been a monk for about over sixty yeah, say over sixty years now. And um, he would always encourage his people, um, say especially on a long yeah, you can do it on a weekend retreat, but it's 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 easier to deal with on a um, a seven nine day retreat to meditate for say um, say for three to four hours at a stretch. You know, for people who are really interested in really really deep uh, samadhi, but you know, there's um, there's other there's other ways and means of working with this, even if you're incredibly busy. So, as you as you develop the uh, the anapanasati, the mindfulness of, of breathing, you've got the right location. But there's there's things you can do. So if you're very very intellectual, I always put emphasis on this anicca principle because, as many of you know, that the perception of changeability is something that you see within yourself, within your own mind and body. You see right through the cosmos, throughout the universe, and this contemplation, this little mantra formulation that you do just in a very, um, very, very relaxed way. So an example would be as you're breathing out, it could be something like the universe. Breathing in, breathing out is changeable. Breathing in, breathing out, the universe. Breathing in, breathing out is changeable. It can be absolutely anything at all. It can be anything whatsoever in the natural world. It can be thoughts, feelings, perception, consciousness, a thousand and one things. As long as it's actually relevant and important uh, to you, um, that's exactly what the area that you should focus on, and it has tranquility power because when you develop this this perception, this attitude of of changeability of phenomena, that um, it helps you to to let go of your personal experience much more uh, much more quickly uh, in time. So. To give you, this is not everybody's cup of tea, but it's very, very effective. I do this all the time. I do this thousands of times a day, and it works very, very well, and it gives the meditation a sense of firmness. So if you sat before work for at least five, ten minutes or more, um, you'll find that when you do these little mantras, very relaxed with big spaces between the words, that um, you know, you've got more tranquility power, and then when you, when you go to get up, and go to work, that you'll be able to sustain that peacefulness for a, a long, like a, a far longer duration of time. And because what, what you're doing is, when you develop that perception of changeability, which is in line with the nature of the universe, that the mind in itself, it, you, you keep, you keep um, reinforcing that point that your whole experience, your whole mind-body experience and everything in the universe is in a state of flux and change. And, you know, I mean, how can you possibly take hold of and, and, and grasp and take hold, I mean, firmly, absolutely anything whatsoever um, if, you know, if that, that experience is, is, is uh, essentially, you know, is, is changing and will never, will never remain the same and will never be under your control. This is, is, is a very, very simple kind of, um, uh, say, say, approach to, con you know, so to contemplation, but it's quite, you know, it's quite effective um, um, over time. So you can choose any subject whatsoever. Some people like to do the breath alone, like the, you know, the walking meditation, the breathing meditation, just to stay with a single object alone. But if you really want to increase the oomph, the meditation power, you add these little mantras, which are very, 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 quite, very, um, very smooth, very, very stable, very even, and uh, you know you can do them on a on a regular basis. And something I always mention with um, uh, with even with the beginners and the intermediate practitioners is that these little mantras, um, say for example, say like feelings are changeable or consciousness is changeable. You do that little that little mantra one little mantra per minute and you do it all your waking hours so um, you know this, this may be new to some people but it's worth it's worth doing because you'll find that you know right you know through work 
uh, when you're out with friends, you could be out at a restaurant, you know, you could be, it could be anything, it could be on an engineering project or even in the hospital system, but you can do this kind of practice 18 hours a day, very, very safely, and you can still function um, at full speed, you can still think and remember, and your intellect and your brain power will not, um, say, be compromised. You know, like I know um, uh, a, a young doctor, I mean, he's a specialist, he's a, a junior specialist, but he's in charge of a team at the, women, at the women's hospital uh, in Perth as an obstetrician, so, you know, he's delivering babies on a regular basis, you know, dealing with, um, uh, you know, like uh, cesareans and, 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 you know, very, very um, um, high-powered, um, you know, uh, procedures and, and, and medical and surgical support. And so he's in charge of a, he's the, the, the team leader and, but he's able to do, this is the test, he's able to do these one minute mantras, I mean continually, he's, he's working tw like 12 hours a day, minimum, at least five, six days um, a week. Because you know, he, he's, he, he's in, he's, um, you know, his job basically is uh, his, his, his life. And uh, you know, he's a, a, very, a very, very key person in the uh, fraternity. So, you know, somebody like that, can maintain, even with that level of responsibility and that level of care where you've got to be incredibly, really, really careful. You, you can't make mistakes, um, you know, when you've got someone um, delivering, a, delivering a baby or with surgical complications, medical complications, you need to be very sharp and aware and whatever decisions you make have got to be really, really, uh, you know, very, very on the ball and um, very, very safe as far as, you know, your, your your uh, medical, um, say, surgical, um, uh, say, experience goes. So it's something you can do for you know for people who are really interested in meditation. You can just do it all the time, and you'll find that when you actually go to sit or walk meditation at any time during during the day, any day of the week, that you can actually get more peaceful in a shorter time frame. So instead of like starting off from the beginning point, you know, you know as, as you know. You could be working eight, nine hours a day, and you know you're, you're, you're thinking, you're making decisions. You know you, you you know you could be moving around, driving, moving location, dealing with different people, uh, different conversations, and it makes the mind busy. But uh, if with this kind of approach, you get this background samadhi, uh, this back background tra tranquility that you can actually feel it. You can see you can you can see it within your own mind, and. Um, it's not just it's not just the it's not just the background peacefulness which is useful for you, but you've got you've got um, uh, enough enough say tranquility power and enough peacefulness there, where you can actually contemplate your personal experience. So, you know what you're actually going through on a day to day basis. You know what's happening with your kids. Um, maybe if there could be a small issue with maybe some person here and there. You can actually, you know, you've got enough focus, enough sharpness of mind, you can investigate and you can d develop a much deeper understanding of what you're, are going, you're, you're going through and how your world um, um, affects you. So, you know, it has a lot of, it's a very, very light, spacious technique. And so in between the, in between the mantra formulations, um, as soon as you notice something, as soon as something important comes up, then you can investigate and increase your wisdom, increase your understanding, because as I mentioned, samadhi's got a workable limit. And, sam and samadhi, the, the, this tranquility of mind, this peacefulness of mind, it's, it's not a sure thing. You know, we, we've seen monks in the past who've had very, very good meditation, who've had, who've had jhanas, who've had full samadhi, and then something really, I mean, really, um, something very, very heavy happens. Uh, you know, maybe, maybe uh, it could be any, like it could be a car crash, you know, we, where you lose like two or three family members, or you get in, you get incredibly sick. You get so sick from malaria, you almost you almost die, or um, or it could be a major accident, like um, broken broken bones or infection, massive blood infection which follows you for, for weeks or months on end and you, you can't practice properly or you get, you get emotionally traumatized with some major life, life issue and it really shakes you up and it, samadhi in itself 
unless you've got it mastered, it's, it's very, very sensitive and it's very, very fickle. And even, even, the, even the monks who have very good, uh, in the monks and nuns who have very good samadhi, and you will have lay practitioners who have very, I mean, very strong parami from several lifetimes of practice, and um, essentially they have a real potential in this, um, in this area. And when you, for people who have this level of meditation, um, it's quite rare, but it's definitely possible. And um, it's that kind of meditation, you, you really have to uh, protect it to a, a great degree. So especially on, with the monks and nuns, they, they, tend to, they tend to live alone or very small groups. They live in isolated locations and they, they minimize the, the personal and community engagements which um, they possibly might come. Uh, they, wait, they, don't, they, they don't go looking for company. They don't go looking for, for you know, to increase their circle of friends. They live very simply, simple food, basic support, um, in isolated locations like the back of, um, say, national parks in Sri Lanka, the back of Lagala, uh, you know, you, where you, you might be walking like one way, you could be walking absolute minimum one and a half, two hours just to get to, uh, say, like a, a, a maybe a small group of villagers to get enough food to walk back. So, you know, you don't you don't have time to get back to your mountain top um, to eat your food. You know, you you actually have to eat halfway. You know, coming back so. Could be, you could be walking like three or four hours through the forest, and also you've got wild, you know, you've got wild animals, you've got snakes all over the place, pythons and uh, anacondas. You've got elephants and bears and leopards in, in Sri Lanka. You know, they had a um, uh, uh, like an old leopard with with um, uh, with bad teeth, uh, infected teeth uh, that was dropping out of trees on on, on postmen and and um, an innocent, um, I mean, the local people usually catch on very, very quickly, you know, when you get a leopard dropping out of the, um, the tree and, and, and taking out the, the local villagers, you know, they catch on very, very quickly. But, you know, he was, he was snapping up, you know, like after they lost like two postmen, you know, they were, like two postmen were traveling together, like both of them were armed. Were armed. <laughs> and, uh, but the leopard was so smart, it still got, it still got the, the, you know, one of, of the first group of guys, but unfortunately didn't um, didn't bump him off. Dropped out of a tree. He, w he went to take a um, to take a pee in the forest. The leopard was just waiting. It was up in a tree in the trees. It was at night uh, around a campfire. Waited for one of the guys to leave the the, the central area. You know, the guy had a torch. Um, I think he was he was he was he was armed. He had he had the pistol on his belt. And, um, and they, uh, at the campfire, they had the, the, the gun out at the side. And so he had the gun, the, the gun like in, in his holster. And the leopard just dropped straight down and basically just knocked, almost knocked him out. And had him, I think had him rather, because they go for the back of the head. And he screamed, he, he, he wasn't fast enough to, to get his gun because the, the animal was so powerful. And his, his friend um, just ran and just popped off a couple of shots and he was dead lucky, he frightened the, um, uh, the leopard off, but um, so you know this kind of you know getting back to the original point, um, you know that level of samadhi is very very fickle, very very sensitive, and even if you've got it, e even if you've got it ma like mastered, um, you, you, your grasp of meditation is is it's re it's really really the, the, your your mind is qu really quite powerful. If you can sustain that level. Of peacefulness of mind, of, of uh, that deep tranquility, deep jhanas, and you can maintain that in, in say, like a busy monastery. I mean, that's just, it's really outstanding because not, very few people can do it. So, regardless of what, um, how peaceful you can get. Um, you know, because all of us have different um, past life development. We have different faculties. Some people will find will find the practice a little bit easier um, than others. But the bottom line is, <coughs> without the, the, in a nutshell, when you look at the the peaceful side of the meditation, the wisdom side of the meditation, um, every single one of you have enough mental focus and energy to get very very deep meditation easily within under 30 to 60 seconds but the thing which blocks you it's not your ability to focus all of you have that um, you know if, if you're a person who's who's um, developmentally disabled 
um, you know, where, where there's, there's, I mean, there's significant brain damage. Maybe it could be, you know, the physical body is not so relevant, but there's significant mental impairment of the faculties, then it, that, that uh, person might find it more difficult. Um, but every single one of you have the mental energy and the focus and the ability to place attention for and sustain attention for long periods of time. But it's this thinking mind. That's, that's, that's the crucial point. And that's what you really need to understand and to work with because uh, essentially that's, that's what's blocking you. That's what's stopping you from getting very, very deep in the practice and very, very deep insight. So with the, I always do this with, with, with everyone, um, whether, you're, whether, you've been, whether you're new to meditation or you've been going for 20, 30 years, um, the wisdom faculty trumps everything. Um, the vast majority of, of what of, of your whole meditation experience. So you've really you've really got to really pay attention to that and put a lot of you know fo really focus on that and really develop that as a skill in your day to day life. So it's not just when you get off the cushion that you start thinking about your personal experience. You do it right through the day and sharpen your skills and your ability in this area. So when you get into a little tiff with someone at work or things don't go so well or um, you know, myself, I've got a, a habit of just running late because I'm doing stuff. Um, you know, so all these things, you've got, you've got to you know, contemplate your personal experience, no matter how trivial it is, how small it is, um, because this increases mental energy, increases the sharpness of your, of your ability to know and understand things, and it increases the mental energy when you actually go to sit and walk meditation. And... Um, Let's see, I won't, I won't, I'll, I'll make sure you guys get a full 45 minute meditation. So, um, what we'll do is, I, I won't give you too much information. So, we've got the breathing meditation, we've got these little mantras that you do. So, we won't get overly complicated. I'll, we'll do a different meditation each session and I'll explain it very, very clearly, but I'll keep it to a basic level. So, we'll, um, I'll just go over the walking meditation for you. And then we'll do a 45 minute um, session as long as you can handle. So with, um, with the beginning instructions, so for the meditation, what you, what you start with is you find, you, you, you choose a task which is um, absolute minimum, say 20 paces, 20 to 30 paces long. The, the, re the reason I say this is it takes that period of time to really get like some, some focus and some, some momentum. So the Buddhist path was about 17, no, it was about, say 18 paces, I think it was. And um, that you know, you're looking at someone who's got, say, absolute mastery of, of, of meditation in all aspects. So the vast majority of us say 20 to 30 uh, paces. And as you walk, you can focus, it's best to focus on the soles of the feet, use a sharp focus. The focus is right down low. So you know, most of us are up in the head, our attention, our, we, we tend to be cerebral, our attention is up high where the five senses are. And, but so we focus, the, we draw the attention away from the cerebral area, down low, um, on the feet. And you can choose. If you find that it's too sharp for you, you can go the whole leg. You can, in the beginning, you can, you can focus on the whole leg walking. You can focus on the lower, the lower leg. So as you, as you, as you go, say for example, you walk at a, um, say like a, a comfortable pace. Don't walk too fast. Don't walk too slow. The key principle is to be as comfortable and relaxed as possible. So as you get to the end of the path, as you turn, um, you, do a, you do like a, at least a three or four point turn. So don't, whatever you do, don't 
hurt your, don't hurt your knee. So as you, as you step, um, you just turn the ankle, just turn, turn, and then you, you can, in order to relax your eyes, you gaze into the distance at the end of the path, you know, 20 to 30 um, paces away, and then that, that will actually relax your eyes. So as, you, as you're focused, as you're walking, keep your attention roughly about absolute minimum, say six, it could be anywhere between six to 10 feet in front of you, but it's a personal, um, personal preference, it's what actually feels comfortable for you. So six to 10 feet um, in front, but try to, try to keep, don't allow your head to drop like, sort of like right forward, just keep it up, upright and comfortable and at a comfortable distance. And then as you, as you walk, you have your hands just gently clasped uh, in front of you. You know, you don't, put, you don't put your hands behind your back. You don't you know, walk with your hands um, uh, at the side because it affects, it affects the quality of your attention. It's something that you can feel. When you put your hands in front, you naturally draw the bodily energy, the way that, it's like the way the chi works. So as you, as you draw the hands together, as you, you know, even when you sit in meditation and your legs are crossed or your ankles are crossed, the energy flows much more, inter the, the, the internal energy flow is much more effective. If you, when you sit in meditation or you're, or you're walking and your, your hands and your legs are all over the place, you're, you're, um, you, you're dispersed, you're, you can feel it, the energy goes out. But as you, as when, you when, the, when, when the ankles are crossed, it, when you sit, hands are, are clasped, the energy, the mental energy and the physical energy gets, gets drawn inwards. So as you, as you turn around and, and then, you, and then you, you, you step off, you just keep walking um, comfortably again and then you, know, you, reach, you reach the end of the path and uh, you turn around. So you, you, with, the, with, the walking, with the walking sitting meditation, um, for people who are really interested in deep, say, tranquility, you need, you need to walk um, absolute minimum. If you, if you, all of, any of you who are interested in deep meditation, um, you need to walk you need to walk, um, walk and sit for a minimum of, say, two, like two hours. So, um, something which might be comfortable for you is you walk for one hour and then immediately sit for one hour after that. So that'll give you the greatest potential to see, um, say, like a very, very peaceful uh, states of mind. I mean, three hours is probably way too much for most of you. Some of you have done plenty of, lots of retreats previously. And if you wish, if you're still thinking excessively, you can add that little mantra that I, that I mentioned. And another key principle is if you still can't settle down, you've got to contemplate. So, you know, you could, be, you could just want to keep it nice and simple. You just watch the sensation in the soles of the feet, walking back and forth, just very slowly, very relaxed. Um, but if your mind, if you just can't stop, you know, you're still thinking excessively, you know, you, you need to investigate your experience. Uh, try, under, try to understand the feelings, the thoughts you're going through. And so you can, you can walk, maybe walk for five minutes and then contemplate, understand your, you know, what you're going through. And then, and then, and when you stop, you know, after you finish the contemplation then walk again. So you go back and forth. That's, that's how you can get like good results. Some people can, can, you know, you can walk and sit for hours on end, but it doesn't necessarily mean that you're going to, you know, some people could even walk and sit for four, five, six hours at a stretch. Um, but it doesn't mean that the meditation is going to be absolutely successful over time. So anyway, I won't go on for too long. We'll, we'll do, a, we'll do just to make it, we'll go, we'll go for 45 minutes. And I'll talk you through it. But um, if, if, if you, you know, if you, because you guys have been probably, most of you have been working all day. So if you, you know, if you're really tired after 30 minutes, um, you can, you can just, um, you can split if you like. So with the beginner's instructions, uh, just get yourself in a uh, comfortable position. 
uh, with your back straight, head, head, head upright and comfortable and put your hands uh, in your lap. You know, it's, always, it's always good to, um, I mean, if you're sitting in a chair, it's always good to cross the ankles. You're drawing the physical and mental energy inwards. And what we'll do is we'll go, we'll go, we'll go broad. We'll use a broad focus for, you know, especially for the beginners. And then I'll, I'll narrow the range down. So what we'll do, we'll go full chest. We've got, so we've got 45 minutes. We'll go full chest. And then we'll go down to the abdomen, which is a smaller focus. And then we'll go around the mouth, which is sharper again. So you can, you can get a sense what feels, um, feels right for you. And so what I want you to do is focus, focus your attention between your throat and your belly button. So all the, all the feelings that you have in the upper, middle, chest and the abdomen. So right from the, the throat down to the, the abdomen, all those sensations as, you, as you're breathing in and out. Um, of, the, of, the, of the body, all the feelings. So as you breathe into the full chest, right down to the abdomen, all those feelings, just focus uh, on those sensations. And um, we'll, do that for, we'll do that for 10 minutes, and then we'll do the abdomen for 10 minutes, and then we'll do the sharp focus for the remainder. So as you breathe in and out of the full chest, I want you to take full, slow breaths right into the base of the abdomen, because this is, increases uh, both the physical, mental alertness, increases energy, and helps to um, uh, counteract uh, drowsiness.
So as the meditation develops, just try to keep the mind and body as physically relaxed as possible.
So as the meditation develops, if you find yourself still thinking a little bit too much, don't say grab hold of those thoughts, don't go pushing them away, just maintain a, like a, a little bit of a, a neutral um, kind of attitude with any thoughts which are coming up in the mind. sharpen the focus uh, a little so I want you to drop your attention down to the abdomen so as you breathe in to the abdomen you have the rise and fall of the belly so I want you to watch the 
the sensation of breathing at that point, focusing on the, the abdomen for the next uh, 10 minutes or so.
narrow down our focus a bit further. So now I want you to focus on the feelings around the mouth section. So, um, you know, because the, the mouth has many, many nerve endings, uh, you can feel it very, very uh, clearly and you'll feel the breathing cycle, the cycle of, of the sensation of breathing on the periphery of that small um, area. So just focus on the feelings of the, on the mouth. You'll feel the breathing on the edge of that point. We'll do that for the rest of the, the session.
So if you find you're still thinking uh, excessively at this point, uh, go across to the, the, the contemplation, the, the insight practice and try to you know, try to understand completely you know, why you're thinking as much as you are. Just take one, one emotion, one mind state at, at a time and try to understand everything about it. Because the more you understand uh, your attachments, uh, the things which might be blocking you or uh, won't allow you to settle down, the more you understand these things, you'll see the mind relax and it will drop down to a more peaceful state over time.
So as you focus on the feelings around the mouth section, just try to relax all the muscles in your face and the muscles around your eyes as well.
we're coming towards the end of the meditation, so just uh, look back and see if you can see any change in the peacefulness of the mind, and I'll ring the gong three times. You can open your eyes when you're ready. Did um, anyone have any questions on the meditation at all before we finish up? Anything significant? Just raise your hand if possible. Okay, so we're supposed to be back at 5.30, so yeah, you guys are probably tired. Um, and so with the, with the, with the schedule, <coughs> Uh, you guys, you tell me exactly what talks. There's, there's, so there'll be four talks, uh, two on Saturday, two on Sunday. So you give me the topic of the talk um, uh, before the talk. You know, before the the time of the talk uh, can be can be anything which is relevant uh, to you. And during the course of the the weekend, you can sit and walk um, as you choose. I tend to do a reasonable amount of walking meditation, but I'll, I'll make sure I sit uh, as well. Um, and yeah, so just uh, with, uh, as you, as you, and try to, if, if possible, with the walking and sitting, just work, just work it as you, as you feel comfortable. And if you, with the, with the meditation, the depth of the meditation, if you're able to sustain the practice, say for at least, say, two hours at a stretch, usually from the two hour mark on, you you should see some um, good states of um, uh, meditation. And okay, so we'll, um, we'll call it an evening and I'll see you guys back here uh, in the morning. <coughs>